Hi children good morning to all of you today we are going to start with one very important lesson this is lesson number 4 the name of the, the lesson is the landscape of the, the soul this is a hornbill chapter and in this chapter we'll learn a lot of things now my dear children have you heard of sensui have you heard of daoism have you heard of confucius do you know what is the real meaning of art so the view of the, the art of the, the western people and the, the eastern people western people represented by the, the american the, the english people and the eastern people represented by the, the chinese people and indian too are the different or similar in order to learn and in order to appreciate all and in order to get a broader view of this lesson let us start with this lesson the landscape of the soul so here we go let's start with we start only with the in english let us simply learn here we go So my dear children this is a lesson is written by the writer name of the, the writer is Natalie Trouvray Natalie Trouvray and this is the, the picture this is the image of the, the writer so i will be telling you some important fact about the writer then you will also be very much interested okay and you will also get to know some of the illusion some of the illusion or some of the mention that is made in the, the text about the place where she was born therefore let us go here you continue let us see about the writer or the author so the name of the writer was nathali nathali trovera nathali trovera so here you continue with the writer she was born on february 2 1975 1975 she is the wife of belgium ambassador to india belgium ambassador to india she has a travel various cities of the world with her husband natalia has been imbibing the cultures of various cities she visits this is a quite interesting my dear children so the husband of natali natali was the ambassador to india so ambassador is the representative of that particular country and originally they are from belgium and the husband was the belgium ambassador and while she came and stayed with the husband she visited the different cities of india and from there she gathered the knowledge of the eastern countries and in this lesson also there is a beautiful reflection of her thought and feelings and also emotions she holds a master degree in history of art and archaeology with a specialization in japanese art from the catholic university of louvain in belgium so you see the specialization was in the japanese art therefore in this lesson also she has written beautifully about art she has written the heart of the, the art in this lesson she is a painter of the eroding heritage of delhi now my dear children she has seen delhi from a very close distance and after seeing after viewing she felt some some sort of pain what is the, the reason for the, the pain because because of the eroding heri heritage of eroding eroding means a what eroding means a decaying 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 means kind of destroying 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 means gradually gradually becoming extinct gradually becoming extinct t i n c t e x t i n c t extinct so she has seen that the particular heritage the cultural heritage that delhi has originally initially now it is it got mixed up 
because of the different people different people getting settled there and it paints the writer the problem is that the deliates do not have a sense of belonging so the real problem is that the people of delhi according to the writer has not has not the sense of belonging belonging ka matlab kya hai belonging ka matlab hai belong coming from belong okay i belong to means i have the identity i have a kind of belonging means i belong to some particular place means some sort of identity that means that the people of delhi are suffering from the identity crisis and that is been explained by the writer nathalie toveroy in a beautiful and and in a very graphical manner she says and adds a majority of the people staying in delhi are migrants from the pre partition punjab or from the states like bihar or southern india a need to preserve the heritage is missing she feels that the need of the time is to preserve the heritage of the missing link missing heritage of delhi now so it will be quite interesting my dear children if we come to know what is the present work on which of the writer is going to do deal with then that will make us more alert that will make a make us more conscious more curious about the writer am i correct therefore let us see what is the work that she has undertaken at present now nathalie toberoy is a art historian is a art historian who came in limelight because of her translated to work city of city of dins a book by william dadinpal she now plans to write her next book on the old delhi architecture like jama masjid and channi cho so the next plan made by the writer is to write this two books one is the jama masjid another one is channi cho so now dear my dear children it is a better that we go to the title we see the significance of the, the title so here we go we see the, the title let us see the, the title the title is the landscape of the soul so my dear children when we talk about the landscape so what is landscape normally speaking what is the, this the landscape landscape is the panoramic view the panoramic view of the of the land including including the sky too means this is this is a graphic picture graphic picture picture of what picture that includes of what the land plus the sky lens plus the sky now the question arises this landscape is landscape of the, the soul means this landscape is related to the mind it not only it not only talks about the physical landscape physical landscape that means the landscape may be of how many type there may be two types of landscape one the physical p h u i p d k l and another one is mental m e n t l mental therefore as we see the, the title in this the title the writer talks about the which kind the writer talks about the mental kind of the picture the mental kind or the, the picture of the, the landscape that means my dear children when we talk about the, the art that means we are talking about what we are talking about the art form so when we are talking about the art artists having broadly speaking there are two type of art one is eastern art eastern art another is western very simple western art now this western art 
means that when the glove, suppose this is the glove, and this glove is divided into how many parts? Four parts. So first we are talking about what? We are talking about the east and the west. We are talking about the east and the west. So this east is represented by whom? The the European people, particularly the European people. Uh, sorry, uh, this uh, east is represented by the Asian people, and the west is represented by whom? West is represented by the American people and the European nations. Therefore, when you are talking about when you are talking about the Western art, this is the art of the Western people, means including the America, the United Kingdom, and the other, and this art is also called what? Figurative art. Have you got it? This art is also called figurative. Figurative means what? This is flowery. Flowery means what? It is physical description. It is, uh, it is called the physical description. Means it doesn't actually invite your eyes to look inside it. So it is uh, again, it is uh, called the illusionistic, illusionistic view. Illusionistic view means a view in a wish you will be okay, you will have you will suffer from illusion. Illusion, you, you know what is the illusion? Illusion is a particular concept. Supposing, supposing you are going, uh, going by the going by the other road. Okay, when you are traveling on the other road, suppose you see a threat, okay, you see a threat, and now that the threat is uh, now in this uh, manner, okay. Now Apparently, when you are looking, it appears like what? It appears like snake. And therefore, therefore, you are afraid. Means that this thread or the rope, this thread or the rope, which is lying on the, the road, it is so similar to, so similar to the snake that, that it is called, it is called the illusionistic view. Means your vision is eluded. Okay? Aka Brahm ho jata hai. Therefore, this sort of this sort of concept is expressed in where in the Western figurative painting. In the Western figurative painting. Coming to coming to the, the Eastern art. So in the, the Eastern art, what, what exactly happened? It is not only the, the physical representation, but also the, the mental rep representation or the, the, the representation or the description. Description of the soul means you are invited to you are invited to travel or journey inside the inside the art. So there will be many scroll S C R O L L scroll. So this uh, scroll may be in the form of like this this one. This may be in the this uh, form also. So in this uh, way, these uh, scrolls also there there you can discover. Whether the horizontal or the vertical scroll that actually tells a lot of things, and we can discover things, and we discover, we begin to discover new, new things when you make the, the journey, when you make the, the mental journey inside the art. So, my dear children, I suppose so that uh, you understood uh, about uh, the basic difference uh, about uh, about uh, this uh, two form of the, the art. One is the Eastern art. Another one is the Western art. One is the Chinese art, and another one is the American figurative art. American figurative art. That means in this lesson, the writer talks about talks about to what the Chinese art. That means he gives a lot of importance to what the writer gives a lot of importance to the the landscape of the soul. Means it is a it is a, the Eastern type or the Chinese type of the art that the writer talks about. I suppose you got it. Therefore, in this connection, when the writer is giving a lot of importance to the Chinese form of the, the art or the Eastern form of the art, well, your, your eyes are invited to go deeper and deeper and discover things after things. That is the kind of the art that is the kind of the art that the writer talks about and gives importance. There lies the 
significance of the title. That means, my dear children, the title of the lesson is eight. The title of the Latin lesson is F. F means what? Suitable. F means what? Just. F means what? Right. This is very right. Okay. This is very much justified. This is very much correct. That means, so from the, the title, we come to understand that Nathalie gives a lot of importance to the Chinese form of the, the art of well. Where not only the, the eye but also the, the mind also is invited, invited to play or to have a fair play on it. Therefore, now let us go to the introduction. After the introduction, we will be going to the synopsis, and after that, we will be going to the detailed summary of the, the lesson. After having the, the detailed summary of the, the lesson, it will be better if time allows, it will be better to better to go for the question and answer there will be many type of question very short type question short type question and the long type question short type question will be helping you for the mcq very short type question also will be helping you to to answer the mcq and the long type question will give you a broader perspective broader knowledge on the, the subject. Therefore, without wasting our time, let us move to the, the move to the introduction and synopsis. Having moved, let's continue. So now, my dear children, let us uh, continue with uh, this. So here we go to the introduction to the, the lesson. So in the introduction, the morning shows that the day in the, the similar manner. In the, the interaction, we will come to understand what the, the writer actually. Uh, going to do speak about what is the central idea, what is the, the gist, what is the what is the what is the theme that he is going to talk, and in which manner the writer is going to talk about it. Therefore, let us continue. Here you move the introduction. Nathalie contrasts Chinese art with the European art by using two stories and tell us how the, the Chinese view of the, the art differ from the, the European view of the, the art. This line is very, very important, my dear children. <clears throat> so, in this lesson, this lesson actually talks about what? This lesson talks about the contrast. Contrast means what? Different point. Tulna karna. Hai na? Tulna karne, karke ne karne ke baad kuch jo difference ho hoga, usko nikalna. And this, this kind of contrast, it is a made, made by telling us two stories. Two stories, one the Chinese story, and another is the is the Western story. And through this story, the writer wanted to present the beautiful contrast, beautiful contrast, beautiful difference between the two forms of the art. All right. Therefore, my dear children, <coughs> let us continue. A European painting rep reproduces an actual view, whereas a classical painting is an unreal one. So, simply speaking, so we will also make the, the table to show the, the contrast, and here also we can understand. So, if we make this a table like uh, this one, suppose uh, the first one is the Chinese one, and another one is a Western figurative painting. Now, one is the Western Western figurative painting is real, and Chinese one is unreal. Now, my dear children, so when I'm speaking about the unreal thing or it is a virtual, so it appears to be more real. It appears to be more real. So here, here, what does the writer actually want to tell? The writer want to tell that if there is no indirect meaning, if there is no no religious view, if there is no, no meditative view, then the whole meaning of life becomes very much futile, very much meaningless. Therefore, we will come to know about all this, we will be telling you the story also and we will side by side, we will be talking about the difference between the, the two forms of the, the art, one is the Chinese 
and another one is the western means one is the eastern and the western form and from there we can also understand the view difference of the, the view of this people too the chinese painter they don't choose a single view point you can travel eat from any point the, the the chinese landscape is not a real but spiritual and inner one therefore the, the chinese one one is spiritual spiritual other one is earthly other one is earthly so it is the inner chinese one is inner and western one is outer so if you remember this words this words will be helping you a lot in order to understand in order to differentiate in order to contrast and also write a beautiful answer into the exam therefore the first one is real and real earthly spiritual outer inner all right then physical and mental that also is the there physical is in the case of the western and mental is in the case of the chinese then let us go for the synopsis here we move let us continue with the synopsis this story is a beautiful illustration of art by the author in this chapter you will see different art forms been compared and interpreted of this painting from the, the artist perspective so as you have seen in the, the biography of the, the artist biography of the, the writer the writer writer herself was a specialist in the, the japanese form of the, the art and therefore in this lesson also from her own point of view or perspective she has interpreted compared and contrasted basically two forms of the, the art one the chinese the second the western form now when you tell what is the method in which this illustration or the narration is made then your answer will be the narrative method the illustrative method or the way of the, the illustration is the story telling method so, so this is story telling method and as you know storytelling method are very much interesting why because when you are very 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 young i mean when you are a kid or a child then your grandmother used to tell you tell stories stories are pertaining to the, the fairies that stories are pertaining to, to a lot of uh, tell from panchatantra or any other any other stories then this actually engrossed you this uh, give you so much interest you are into the into the other world into the imaginative world so see the, the case here too here we will come to know about these two stories and these two two stories are beautifully illustrated and this uh, gives a difference or the contrast of the, the view of these two forms of the, the art therefore in order to understand it but uh, here we go let us continue to the detailed summary of the, the lesson and uh, uh, let us uh, complete this line also the author tries to show a comparison of the, the different art form based on the on on regions based on the, the region means the area this uh, chapter deals with the, the stories and the, the myth circulating uh, uh, circulating famous uh, painting in ancient times the the focus is uh, laid on how realistic the, the painting were and how beautifully they are created okay so we'll understand all this when we go through the, the details summary in english so in order to understand that let us go to the summary we'll understand it better okay my dear children so i'll be telling you the, the story from the, the main text uh, so and after that i uh, will be going to the, the summary so it will be very realistic uh, when you go go to the, the text for the kind of the story and the manner of its telling therefore let us uh, go to the go to the story so some of the, the terms are there anecdote anecdote is the story pertaining to the ancient people 
which are realistic story or the, the real story they are these are called the anecdote anecdote means the story pertaining to or related to the real people of the, the past delicate realism figurative painting illustrationistic illusionistic likeness illusionistic likeness conceptual space conceptual space so all is let us see now let us see the, the story here we go let us continue a wonderful tale is told about the painter Udaozi, who lived in the 8th century. His last painting was a landscape commissioned by the, the Tang Emperor Zhuangzong to decorate palace wall. The master had hidden his work behind a screen, so only the, the emperor would see it. For a long while, the emperor admired the wonderful scene. Discovering forest, high mountains, waterfalls, clouds floating in an immense sky, men on hilly paths, birds in flight. Look, sir, said the, the painter, in this uh, cave at the, the foot of the, the mountain dwells a spirit. The painter clapped his hands and the entrance to the, the cave opened. The inside is plain it beyond anything what can convey. Please uh, let me show you your majesty the, the way the painter entered the, the cave, but the, the entrance closed behind him, and before the before the astonished emperor could move or utter a word, the painting had vanished from the, the wall. Not a trace of Udaus's brush was left. And the artist was never seen again in this world. So, how is uh, your feeling, my dear children? So, this is uh, related to the, the, uh, the painter. The painter was Udaoj. The painter was Udaoj. So, you have heard of this uh, concept Daoism. Daoism. The, the Chinese artist of the 8th century. So this story beautifully tells about the form of the, the art, the Chinese form of the, the art in a beautiful manner. What is this story, my dear children? In this story, this uh, this this is this was a particular work that was commissioned or ordered. Commission means what? Ordered. Ordered by whom? The emperor. Emperor was Zhuangzong. Who was Zhuangzong? Who was the Chinese emperor of which dynasty? The dynasty was the Tang dynasty. Tang was the particular dynasty and he actually gave the, the order, order that a landscapes to be made on the wall of the, the palace in order to beautify, in order to decorate it. And after, after, the, after the painting was made, after the painting was made, the wall was wall was kept covered. It was it was actually covered. So the day of this inauguration came, the king came there, and the, the king Kohakuta saw the wonderful scene. Okay, this uh, scenery was a very much surprising scenery. It was a very wonderful scenery. Okay, adhut ek drishya tha. और ये दृश्य में मतलब दिखाई क्या देते थे ये दृश्य में दिखाई देते हैं फॉरेस्ट दिखाई देते थे माउंटेन दिखाई देते हैं वाटरफॉल दिखाई देते थे क्लाउड दिखाई देते हैं और स्काई दिखाई देते थे एंड देयर वेयर पीपल वर्किंग ऑन द पाथ मेनी पास वेयर आल्सो देयर वेरी जिगजग पाथ टफसी टर्बी ओके जिगजग पाथ वेयर देयर एंड ऑन द पाथ इट वाज अ सीन दैट People were walking, okay. Some of the, the people putting their basket on the, the back were moving up, okay. That actually shows also the, the tradition. So this was there, but what exactly happened? So when when this was this was uh, revealed to the, the emperor, then the, the painter said to that, sir, just wait. The painter, so the, the painter did what he clapped his hand and the, the Entrance of the, the cave was open. 
सो वट पेंटर सेट पंटर ने एक बहुत मजेदार बात किया वो क्या था कि सर आपको मालूम है ये केव का जो नीचे है ना नीचे में एक गुफा है और एक गुफा में एक स्पिरिट रहता है एक आत्मा रहता है उसमें एक जीवन है therefore so saying what he did to the painter clapped the hand and the entrance to the cave was opened then when the entrance to the cave the gate of the cave was opened the door of the door of the cave was opened after that the painter said sir just wait let me show you the path or the way inside it so saying what happened when he when he went okay the painter clapped his uh, clapped his hand and the entrance to the, the cave opened and the inside is plain it beyond anything what can can be so andar ki jo sthiti thi andar ke jo picture thi wo picture bahut shandar picture thi wo bahut splendid mane gorgeous gorgeous very beautiful scenery was there there inside shandar the then he was uh, telling that uh, let me show you the, the way inside the painter entered the cave and after that the painter entered the cave and the entrance as soon as he entered then miracle happened the gate or the door was locked locked behind locked behind locked behind him and the emperor could not see could not see the man also nor he could see any any trace any sign of the, the painting made by the so how do you feel my dear children so from this story we will get to know about what is really the chinese painting or the eastern painting painting of the soul so for that now let us go to the explanation so here here we go let us continue so dear children so as you have seen in the, the beginning of the, the the lesson in the beginning of the, the lesson it is started in the form of the, the story it is the first it is the story of udaoji udaoji therefore in the, the in this the particular lesson the writer talks about the comparison between between the, the two form of the, the art one the chinese another one is western the chapter is a comparative study of the, the european and the, the chinese painting it touches upon the very subtleties of the reality and the art subtlety means it is coming from it comes from s u b t l e subtle subtle means the particular thing that you cannot touch suppose i am talking about emotion i am talking about feeling okay these are things are abstract concept and this thing you cannot touch and these are things are called subtle subtle means this lesson touches upon various subtleties of रियलिटी रियलिटी का ऐसा कुछ मतलब दिशा है रियलिटी का ऐसा कुछ एस्पेक्ट है साइड है जो आप टच नहीं कर पाते वो जो बहुत सटल है आर्ट इज वन ऑफ द फॉर्म ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन लाइक पोएट्री म्यूजिक एंड डांस सो हियर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द आर्ट एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द फॉर्म ऑफ द एक्सप्रेशन लाइक द पोएट्री म्यूजिक एंड डांस वेर मैन प्लेस ए वेरी वाइटल रोल man plays a very vital role so what is the role of the, the man also that i will tell you when we proceed all these uh, forms of expression have an abstract nature as it cannot be defined and have to be have to be felt and experienced now this these are very much abstract terms and they can never be defined they can only be felt they can only be felt or can be experienced through through your imagination through your fancy through your through your imagination the chapter has a three important areas of discussion and act that related to chinese and european painting daoism and how how one of the, the philosophical doctrines of daoism called sanzi is reflected in chinese painting so we have already talked about daoism and how this daoism is related to sun shui what is the really sun shui is everything will be discussing in a beautiful manner so first let us see the the anecdote so the, the anecdote we have already seen in the book so we'll now repeat so in order to repeat let us continue 
anecdote about Chinese painter Wu Daozi. So, my dear children, we have seen the anecdote. So, we have seen the story, and the story is uh, is related to the, the real man Wu Daozi, and from Wu Daozi there is the concept of Daoism. D A O S I S M Daoism. Dawi Jim. Dawi Jim. S is not there. This S is not needed. Uh, D A O I S M. Dawi Jim. The eighth century Chinese emperor Zhuang Zhang commissioned a painter named Dawi to do paint a landscape. Uh, when the, the painting was ready, the, the emperor was invited to appreciate it. He enjoyed the looking at the forest, high mountain, waterfall. Cloud, man under the hill, part, birds and flight, etc. Defected in the in the painting, but the painter was not satisfied and he invited the attention of the, the emperor toward the cave in the, the painting, inside of which the painter seated recites or lift his feet. The painter clapped his hand, causing the, the entrance to the, the cave open. Then the, the painter said, "The inside is splendid, beyond any anything words can be." Please let me show your majesty the, the way the painter entered the cave and, and he got himself disappeared. The cave door closed behind him and the painting disappeared from the, the wall before the, the emperor could move or think. Now my dear children, so it is the time for us to, to see another anecdote related to, related to the blacksmith named Quentin Mercy, Quentin Mercy. In order to see that, let us go to go to this story once again. Let us go to the go to the lesson. Here we move. Now this is the story related to related to the blacksmith. So let us see the story and appreciate it. So here you go. Let us continue. In the 15th century. In the 15th century, Antwerp is the name of the, the place. A master blacksmith called Quintin Mercis fell in love with a painter's daughter. The father, the father would not accept a son-in-law in such a profession. So, what is the profession we are talking about? The profession is is the blacksmith. So, what does this blacksmith actually do? Blacksmith, the blacksmith. Blacksmith actually deals uh, with the uh, what? The iron, iron work. Means uh, he is actually, he actually deals with uh, the iron work, and therefore, therefore the painter actually did not like the son-in-law in this uh, profession. So what Quintin must do? For this reason, Quintin. Quintin sneaked into the, the painter's studio and painted a fly on his latest uh, panel with a, such a delicate realism that the master tried to swat it away before he realized what had happened. Delicate realism means this is also called the illusionistic realism that we have already discussed about. Illusionistic realism. Realism. Realism, illusionistic realism means this is such a realism that the painter re look painter looked like the living being. Therefore, what exactly happened in order to impress the painter? In order to impress the father-in-law, what he did one day he sneaked into the painter's studio. He sneaked means. He went in a secretive manner. Secretive manner. Secretive manner means without the knowledge. Means stealthily. Okay. Stealthily, he went very secretively. He went went to the, the studio of the, the painter, and then what he did? He painted a fly monkey on the, the lattice panel. Panel का मतलब क्या है? Panel का मतलब है फलक, फलक, है ना? Panel is फलक. The particular place, the particular particular place where he actually does the painting. Therefore, on this what he did, he painted the fly 
with a such a realism, with a such a delicate realism, with a such illusionistic realism that the master, when he came to the, the studio and saw the, the painting, he thought that it was quite real and therefore he tried to, he tried to sweat it. He tried to heat it. He tried to drive it away. Quentin was immediately, immediately admitted as an apprentice into the, into the studio. Therefore, the painter got very much impressed. Unka man mein kya hua? Both acha feeling hai. Kisko upar? Blacksmith ko upar. What is the name? Quentin Mises. And therefore, what he did? He said that, beta, kal se aap a jau. So, I will be teaching you the real art. I will be teaching the, the real art. And finally, he also become the son-in-law of the, the painter too. Because of his painting. He married to his uh, beloved and went on to become one of the, the most famous, famous painters of, the, of his age. So, finally, he becomes successful in getting, getting his, uh, his daughter married to him. And he become one of the most famous painters of that time, of that age. These are two stories illustrate what each form of art is trying to achieve a perfect illusionistic likeness. In Europe and the essence of inner life and spirit in Asia. So this life is very very important my dear children. So this life actually talks about what this line actually talks about the illustration. This line talks about the Contrast. These are two stories illustrate of what each form of art is trying to achieve. Means what is the ambition? What is the objective of these two types of the art? The one is the illusionistic likeness. In which case, in the case of the Western art. And in the other, in the other, that is Eastern, Eastern form, the essence. Essence ka matlab kya hai? Essence ka matlab hai gist. G I S T, gist, the essential elements. Okay, essential elements. So, ha, honey is the, the essence from all the, the flowers. From the, the flowers, essence is extracted in order to make the, the honey. That is, the essence of the inner life and the, the spirit is expressed where? Is expressed in the Chinese or the Eastern form of the art. I suppose you understood it beautifully. Therefore, now let us uh, once again uh, go to the explanation part. So, now let us uh, see the meaning of uh, these uh, tales or the stories. Such stories as, as that about uh, Udaoji are very common in China's classical education. Classical ka matlab kya hai? Classical ka matlab hai? Sastriya. Means related to the religious teachings. It was uh, through such stories that great masters met abstract concept concrete. So have you understood it? Means that the stories are told for what particular region in order to make the abstract idea, the imaginative idea to make very real. In order to make the imaginative look very real or the concrete or the solid, these stories has a lot of contribution. This story has a lot of relation or contribution. Such tales reveals that art has inner life, meaning soul. The landscape of the, the soul means the landscape also, the painting also has the inner life or the, the soul or the spirit. Only when one is able to see that inner life can be understood, understood uh, one can understand it's a true meaning. Let's see it once again. Only when one is able to see that inner life can one understand it's a true meaning. The emperor had appreciated the, the painting only from what he saw. He could only see the, the body of the, the painting whereas the, the painter tried to show him the, the soul. Means the physic. P H Y S I Q U E physic or body, the appearance, appearance, the outer cover, outer cover of the, the painting was only, 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 only seen by the, the by the 
empire. Whereas the painter knew the ways, the painter knew the journey inside, the inner life, the meaning of the, the painting. Similarly, similarly, Quentin Mister signified illusionistic likeness in European painting. So, on the other hand, when we are talking about mysteries, okay, Quentin mysteries, then we are talking about the illusionistic likeness means almost, almost, almost a real, almost a real appearance into the European or figurative painting of the European people. The same, the same holds good for the story about the frightening likeness of a dragon to a real one which prevented prevented Chinese painter from drawing its eye as it felt that then the dragon dragon would see him and attack him. So because of all this, because of this, this particular region, what is the region? Illusionistic likeness. A particular Chinese painter, what he denied, he refused to do, refused to paint, refused to paint the eye of the dragon because it was felt that the dragon will attack him and kill him. Now, let us see the basics of the Chinese painting. Here we go. Let us continue. Chinese paintings are based on the philosophy of Taoism. Philosophy of Taoism. Tao means path or way. Okay? So, when we are talking about D-O-I-S-M, Taoism, so this is this consists of two two things. One is Dao. Dao means the path. Dao means the path or the, the way. The way into the into the, the mystery of the, the universe. So this Taoism actually refers to the mystery of this universe. So my dear children, this life is a life is a M Y S T R T R Y mystery. Life is a mystery. Life is a game that never, never, never people could uh, discover what really life is. Therefore, this is a kind of R I D -D -D L -E riddle. Means it is a such a question which can never be solved. Never be solved. And this is a what is told in Taoism. Means there is a religious or devotional or inner aspect inner aspect in the, the Chinese form of painting that is represented by Taoism. The emperor may rule over the, the territories but the artist knows the way within. So that the painter says that the emperor emperor only can only can do what he can only reign or control. He can only only control the territory but he doesn't know the, the way within and that is known by the, the painter or the artist life has no meaning unless you undertake uh, uh, undertake the, the inner or the spiritual journey so life got life got empty or light life become void life become meaningless meaningless if we do not have the, the inner journey if we do not understand the soul if we do not understand the religious aspect in it. When Udauji say it, let me show you the, the way he meant the, the way to the, the inner meaning of the, the art or the mystery of the, the universe. When he wanted to, when Udauji said that, Sir, let me show you the, the ways he meant to, to tell about the, the inner meaning of the art or he wanted to tell the mystery of the, the universe. Okay? Rahasya, Jeevan ka Rahasya. और ये पूरा दुनिया का जो रहस्य है वो बताने के लिए उदाव जी ने बोला सर आई विल शो यू द वे दिस वे इज नॉट द सिंपल वे ही वांटेड टू टेल अबाउट द स्पिरिचुअल वे रिलीजियस वे द इनर वे द रिडल ऑफ लाइफ द मिस्ट्री ऑफ लाइफ दिस इज द द स्पिरिट दिस द स्पिरिट ऑफ द चाइनीज पेंटिंग this is the spirit, this is the soul, this is the soul, this is the main matter or the crux, this is the crux of the, the matter. They do not reproduce an actual view but use a real landscape to say something more. Chinese painter therefore wanted the viewer to take 
plural view of plural view to enter into its painting not the singular view but the plural view okay the plural view is wanted or invited by the, the chinese painter he wants our active participation not only physical but also mental his the landscape is a, not a not a real landscape it is representation of the, the inner reality a spiritual and conceptual space the landscape that we are talking about this is not the, the physical landscape the landscape having the mountain the water the cave the man the path the cow or any other thing any other thing it actually it talks about it talks about the inner life it talks about the inner reality or the spiritual or the conceptual space the space of idea where you begin to think ponder reflect and meditate i suppose you understood it now let us uh, go to daoism so daoist concept how this universe is uh, created and there is a beautiful beautiful concept of daoism and when you understand this our understanding will be perfect and complete therefore in order to understand that let us see daoism in a graphic or pictorial manner according to daoism this universe is composed of two complementary poles complementary poles this universe according to daoism is composed of two poles okay suppose this is one pole this is another pole and these uh, poles are called complementary poles means one helps other in order to tell about the complete whole means without one the other is incomplete complementary means what isko kya bolte hain hindi mein bolte hain pura hai na ek ne dusre ko kya karta hai purti karte hain complement karte hain matlab uska jo khali space hai usko matlab kya karte hain bharne ka kaam karte hain means khali idea therefore so according to daoism the universe suppose we are this is our universe universe and we will be thinking that this universe in terms of daoism and according to according to this there are two complementary poles one is yin one is yin and another one is what yan w y a n g not w y a n g now this yin and yan this yin and yan these are two complementary poles sitting on the opposite side sitting on the, the opposite side in is the what female in is the female and yan is the male yan is the male counterpart male counterpart the interaction of these two in a, a two energies makes the universe now when there will be interaction between in and yang and this is the, the middle word okay this called the middle word this called the middle word and because of this middle word what happen the interaction between yin and yang takes place and in this way the universe in this way the globe is formed have you understood it now when we are talking about the, this middle part middle part means void void means a what what means so what empty so this empty part of the, the globe is compared to what compared to to that part in the pranayama where suppose uh, you are you are inhaling inhaling the, the the oxygen then then retain it then exhale it exhale it breathing out then suspend suspend then wh what will happen your stomach will be quite empty when the, the stomach will be quite empty then what will happen that is the, the particular particular position when meditation occurs when meditation occurs in pranayama so this particular part this particular 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 space when 
you are breathing out when it is empty this empty part of your stomach when you are exhaling out the exhaling out the air that is compared to the void what is compared to the what what is compared to, to that particular part of part of suspension when you are breathing out when you are breathing out or when you are exhaling when you are exhaling when you exhale or when you are exhaling out therefore uh, let us see this part uh, once again the meeting point call the middle void middle void middle void void is the meeting point of yin and yang holds great significance means the middle void middle void has lot of significance lot of significance when this yin and yang yin and yang meet together in the, the middle void this got lot of significance though it is often overlooked this can be compared with the yogic practice of pranayama breath in retain breath out the retain part is the middle void where meditation occurs the void is essential nothing can happen without it nothing can happen without it therefore let us be more specific in daoji me landscape is called sanshui so this is quite important in daoji the landscape is called sanshui means when you are talking about the landscape landscape of the soul of the soul that means so we are talking about sanshui we are talking about sanshui so sanchui this uh, san actually refers to what this refers to mountain this refers to mountain and this uh, shui actually refers to what water that means in a particular landscape what will be there two things will be there one is the mountain another one is the water so this uh, mountain is a uh, mountain is represented by the san and water is represented by the shui and in this uh, way the concept sanshui occurs and this sanshui is represented or described by daoism in its own concept of the universe so let us be more specific and let us go to the, go to this description once again so here we go let us continue in daoism landscape is called as sanshui san means mountain shui means water however it doesn't represent a real landscape it is the daoist view of the, the universe so when you when I, when you are asked what is a sanchu sanchu is sanchu is the, the particular concept where san actually represents the mountain and shui represents the, the water and this is a daoist view of the, the universe to understand chinese painting one must understand daoism in order to understand the chinese or the eastern painting you must understand daoism without that your understanding of the, the chinese or the, the eastern painting will be incomplete so the mountain and the, the water in the, the chinese painting are representative of sanshui and the, the unpainted space is represented of the middle void so when we are going to the chinese painting this is this a particular part of where it, it is a painted san and shui mountain and water so this actually are the, the two complementary poles two complementary uh, poles and the particular part of the middle void which is uh, compared to two compared to two the yogic practice okay yogic yogic practice of retaining the breath is is uh, what is the is the particular particular concept particular concept that is to be remarked man is the medium of communication between between the, the two complementary poles of the, the universe and you can see his uh, presence too in the, the chinese painting so as i told you earlier so what is the, the role of man in the, the chinese painting so this a uh, man is called the conduit man is called the conduit means it is uh, it is also called the pipe it is uh, called the pipe of communication as in the, the pipe you are putting water and the water is water is transported transported to everywhere in the similar manner 
man is the particular pipe or the, the vehicle or the medium of transportation transportation in the Taoist view of the, the universe where yin and yang where shan and sui where the mountain and water water are the, the two complementary course poles and there is the, the middle word which is very important which is unpainted part and which holds a greater importance which is compared to, to the yogic yogic part of pranayama called breathing out my dear children i suppose your your concept and understanding of this lesson is very complete now it is the time for us to go for the highlight of the, the chapter so we go to the highlight of the, the chapter now so first let us see the, the main point the chinese painting are abstract in nature as they cannot be defined and have to be felt and experienced so you remember this so now we are talking about the two form one is chinese other one is the western so this is uh, the serial number first we'll be talking about one is the chinese is abstract abstract and the western is real abstract means uh, what unreal unreal that can only be thought that can only be that can only be assumed in contrast there is an illusionistic likeness in european painting so in the, the european painting there is accurate painting accurate okay there is illusionistic likeness which is a missing here this is a illusionistic a miss likeness is missing in the, the chinese painting or chinese landscape painting chinese painter wu dao ji who disappeared inside his painting so this disappearance my dear children refers to what refers to the religious or the inner life inner life cannot be seen in the, the similar manner wu dao ji when he clapped the hand went inside the cave and then the, the door was locked behind him and this actually refers to the inner life or the inner view of life without a witch without his life is quite empty quite meaningless another chai painter who did not want to paint the, the eye of the, the dragon dragon for fear that the dragon may attack him on seeing him do you know what is the dragon my dear children dragon is what dragon is the the snake which is having the having the wings you just can imagine this is a mythical character okay a mythical character only in the, the meat only in the, the meat you can find okay a snake is a flying dragon and the, the chinese uh, painter the chinese painter wu dao ji sorry the, the chinese painter one of the, the chinese painter what he did uh, why he, he he denied he refused to paint it for the, the fear that the dragon may fly and attack him and he may die so we are talking about the Be belgium painter so this uh, belgium is the particular place in which the writer also was uh, born so belgian painter quentin mesty who painted a realistic fly to many of the women he loved and woman was the daughter of another painter then let us uh, continue let us uh, continue with the main points chinese paintings are based on the philosophy of taoism which says that life has no meaning unless you undertake the inner spiritual journey so in the, the chinese painting the chinese painting is the is the particular painting of which actually views which actually views the religious aspect of life and without a wish the spiritual journey without inner journey or the spiritual journey without mental journey mental journey or the journey of the soul life becomes quite quite empty life become quite monotonous life become quite dull or uninteresting chinese painters wanted that the viewers act participation not only physical but also mental while viewing their painting so when you have seen the particular story the story of okay 
Udauji, when he when he rebuilt the landscape before the, the king, the king only wanted to see the, the physical, but the painter wanted to see wanted wanted him to see the inside of it. It was not only physical, it was also mental. And in order to share show the, the mental aspect of it, he went inside and become invisible. Means he can go on discovering parts and parts when it goes inside the goes inside the painting. According to Taoism, the, the interaction of two complementary poles, yin and yang, makes the universe. So this is the theory of the, the creation on the, the basis of Taoism. According to the Taoism, the universe is uh, created because of the, the interaction of the, the yin and yang, the mountain and the, the water, which are the, the two complementary poles and uh, which are meet in the middle part, which is called the middle what? And because of this, this uh, meeting between these uh, two complementary poles, the universe is created. Now let us uh, come to the, the last point. So here we go. Let us see the, the last point. Man is the medium of the, the con communication between the, the two complementary poles. That, the, that is their meeting point and you can see his uh, presence too in Chinese painting. So in the, the Chinese painting as you have seen, man has an important role. Man is, man is uh, called the channel. Man is uh, called the channel. He has an important role. He is the, the channel between the, the two complementary core and he is also called the conduit or the pipe. Can do it or the pipe of communication, channel of communication. PIP pipe, pipe of communication. This is the type of the pipe. Okay. And he is the called the conduit of communication. So, my dear children, now. We can uh, go for some of the, the words, some of the, the words. So these words are simply, uh, you can uh, write the words, okay, in your in your notebook and it will be very helpful in understanding the, the lesson. So many of the, the words are there which are very uncommon. And make that either the short entertaining story about a real person. Flanders is the region of modern, modern day Belgium in Europe. In Europe. Okay, Flanders is a particular place or a region in, in Belgium. Sneak moves secretly. Panel means flat board on which the painting can be made. Delicate realism means quality of the art which makes a scene real. Apprentice is a particular person taken to learn a skilled practical trade. Illusionistic likeness, technique of using pictorial methods to deceive the eye. Essence of inner life and spirit, inner meaning of art or mystery of the universe. Figurative painting, representation of piece of art through the eyes of the creator's imagination. Horizontal scale, horizontal scroll is there and another one is the vertical scroll. Horizontal scroll represents what the painting on a paper which has been rolled up horizontally. Sanchui, the Chinese word for landscape. So landscape means the Sanchui, means the mountain and water. Complementary means complete, combining to form a complete whole. Yin and Yang, Chinese word for active and masculine. Yin is Chinese word for receptive and feminine. Middle word is the space between the two elements of an of an image where they interact. Pranayama is the, the Hindi word for conscious awareness of breath. Conduit is the, the channel or the, the means. Eye of the, the landscape means the link which lead to the, the true meaning of the landscape. So I suppose my dear children you understood the lesson very well. So it is the time for going to the, the theme of the, the lesson in only few words. So here you go. Let us uh, see the, the theme and after that we will discuss only two questions. After that we will conclude the session for today because the lesson will be complete in all respects. 
So first let us see the, the landscape of the soul. What is the, the theme? So what is the, the theme? The central idea. Central idea is the controls. The writer contrasts the Chinese with the, the European art by recounting two stories about the, the Chinese art and one story about the European art. The European wants a perfect likeness. So whereas in Asia, art is the essence of life and spirit. The Chinese are required to the active participation of the viewer both physically and mentally to understand it. Now my dear children, let us go to the questions, the actual questions. So this question is very important. We have already described the questions. Sanshi, explain the concept of Sanshi. Very important. San and Sui. This is actually the combination of the, the two, uh, two words to expression. Sanshi meaning mountain water. San means mountain, Sui means water. It refers to the Chinese painting that involves natural landscape. The landscape is spiritual and inner one. It represents the two complementary pole, yin and yang, reflecting the Taoist view of nature. This is quite important, my dear children. So, from here you can understand the basic concept from the Sun Tzu. What do you understand? By the term outsider art or art brute or raw art. This is also important. Outsider art is referred to the art of those who have no right to be artists as they have received no formal training yet show talent and artistic insight. Art brute or raw art are the work of art in their in their raw state or regarded cultural or artistic influence. So you have a heart of the, the rock garden of Chandigarh, and this is the, the work of the, the this is the, the work of the, the outsider art or the art due to where, well, a person who is not trained in this particular field becomes the, the artist, and this uh, creation is uh, made from made from the objects which are the waste material, which are also called the recycling materials. So. This is also another form of the, the art we can understand. Therefore, my dear children, I suppose the whole part of the, the lesson is covered and you understood the lesson better. And I hope that I will meet you in the, the next video with a new and very interesting topic. Till then, bye bye and have a very good day.